In September of 2013, I moved out of my apartment and into an RV I had just bought. Since being out of my parents' care at the age of 17, I had only experienced apartment life and renting rooms in other people's homes, neither of which really resonated with me. At the time, I was nowhere near being able to afford my own home or land, but an RV answered a lot of desires that I had. The top three reasons for moving into my RV, which had not yet been available to me, were being able to do renovations, not paying pet rent or sharing walls with other people, and the ability to relocate easily. I bought my first RV, which you might recall I named Rhea Rada for $6,000. I figured if I could live in it for two years, the cost of the RV and the cost of parking it somewhere would break even compared to the cost of renting an apartment at the time. And if I lived in it longer, then I'd be living for pretty much as cheap as possible without being homeless. When I began RV living, the campground costs were around $300 per month. As the two years rolled around that I was waiting for to basically break even, I was still totally comfortable and absolutely loved my RV and loved living in my RV. I remember waking up in the morning, cozy in my bed, and my eyes would open to the roof and I would remember that I'm in my RV, my own roof over my head, a snug home that was mine, and I would just feel appreciation pour out for this simple life that I had created and put together that kept me safe and also allowed me to save the maximum amount of money than any other traditional living situation. I was enjoying the simple life. Being stationary, I even had a fenced area for my projects and for my dog, Andiamo who loved laying on the patio and also even underneath the RV, keeping watch over our little home. I did my solar projects, which all of you can view on my YouTube channel, solar projects that were on my RV installed and solar projects that were separate from my RV. I learned so much mechanical work from owning the RV and a lot about electrical work and plumbing. Lots and lots of plumbing fixes. <laughs> it was a renaissance time for me with a lot of productivity and passion projects as well as new hobbies. It was the time that really set my channel up and brought in a lot of viewers and subscribers to watch all the renovations and work I was doing relating to the RV and also projects that did not necessarily pertain to an RV but that anybody could do. I may have looked impoverished from the outside as I was living in an old RV in a trailer park, often rolling on the ground fixing stuff or crawling under my sinks to investigate leaks, but I was saving so much money and doing everything that I loved. This is one of the most cherished times of my life. As my YouTube channel and popularity grew, some viewers encouraged me to travel and get out onto the road. After all, my home had wheels and a powerful engine. It took some consideration because I was quite happy not traveling. I loved having my cozy yard and place where I could do my projects. Sadly, Andiamo soon passed away at almost 15 years old and also I was uprooted from my favorite RV park by new management and it felt like perhaps the road was my next step to get out on the open road and take my home 
on wheels with me. Alas, I did not work, I did work from home at this point, so nothing was tying me to one location. It was determined. I was hitting the road. I did not know at the time, but it would feel like a whirlwind of never ending, constant change, movement, excitement, fatigue, and heavy financial expense. By the way, all of my channel, all of my travels can be watched and enjoyed for free on my YouTube channel. Now, I'm not discouraging anyone from RV life on the road as I cherish those experiences and memories and I feel so grateful and downright lucky to have had those travels. However, as the years rolled on, just like my RV tires kept going, and as I saw and experienced life all over this country, my sense of home and belonging faded. Staying at so many RV parks, I always looked for some of those who, like I had previously had, had their cozy long-term setups with their own little potted gardens and piece of heaven or a slice of life going on. Flowing from region to region across the US, I always had a lookout for where would be a really nice place to finally settle down. Where could I have gardens and chickens and a yard for my puppers to run and play in? Where could I have affordable living an affordable, simple life. Living with all of the local amenities, you know, all of the regular local amenities, as well as somewhat near a big city for those less occasional amenities, like an airport or convention, fine dining, such, such, such. My heart was ready to stay in one spot for a while and get my own home set up again. As you may have seen in previous videos, I began helping with house renovations while living in my RV nearby. Though I did not find the quaint life offered previously in other regions or other campgrounds. Tornadoes and hail regularly threatened my RV and life began to feel like I was just surviving, not living and loving it. Then the Rona struck and my main source of income, my biggest client, went under and I was quickly needing to reconsider everything. Through the magic of the universe, I was offered a job that would allow me to grow my accounting career that I was already doing on the side and hoping to grow. Within days, I began a whole new lifestyle that wasn't anywhere comparable to what I was used to. Suddenly, I was tied to a location. During this time, I experienced every emotion you could imagine with a big lifestyle change and had a hard time figuring out if I was happy or not. On one side, I now had a more reliable income, but much of my freedom and comfort was removed. As I began to commute to work, sometimes I still have a hard time accepting that. It became a no-brainer that commuting in a big diesel dually was not going to be the best financial decision I've ever made. In fact, it was very expensive, not just for fuel costs, but daily, mile by mile, depreciation costs. Getting out from under the truck was my next move. Now I faced staying at the unwelcoming RV park that was the only option near my new job. All the plants I put out on my patio would be eaten to stubs in just a day's time from all of the grasshoppers. 
management was not friendly and their septic system would flood, leaving the park reeking of sewage on a regular basis. Don't forget, the tornadoes would whirl by so many miles this way or a mile that way. Not a weather contender for an RV. When I bought my newer fifth wheel, a year's time into my life on the road period, I had planned to never sell it and place it on a piece of land somewhere and develop that land into my own Garden of Eden. My fifth wheel was a larger investment than my motorhome was. It was depreciating rapidly and often was at the threat of natural elements. If I kept the fifth wheel, I'd need to buy land quickly and then have the likely task of setting up all of the utilities, which would leave me off grid for a while and away from home at my new job while the dogs were left alone. That was not going to be the path of least resistance. If I sold my fifth wheel, the money that I had in it would be free to use elsewhere and wouldn't be depreciating. I could buy a house which would only go up in value, have utilities immediately, and a safe haven for the dogs, and then take all the time I needed to get my garden going instead of focusing on developing land before even having basic comforts. The option was clear to me. I sold my RV and I invested in my first home. Now I have plenty of space for all of my projects, for gardens, chickens, plenty of yard for the dogs to run and play and nap on the patio. It has the huge bonus of appreciating instead of depreciating. I'm now able to get back to the life I feel like I left when began traveling. It's taken a bit of time to get settled in, but I wouldn't change a thing at this point. That includes my RV travels. I'm glad it all happened as it did, and I'm glad to be where I am now. I feel like I'm at a point again, like where I was when I was most happy when I first got my RV, doing renovations, working on projects, having my garden. Now, not just potted plants of a garden, but the option for so much more. And for the first time, getting chickens. I can also now do renovations, which will be more satisfying and permanent than in my RV. I'm so excited about my new lifestyle and new future, and I hope you are too. I know not everyone will be, and there are plenty of other YouTube channels to watch. My videos now won't be forced to get content out. It'll come as the time and projects allow, which I believe will create richer content than before when I was traveling and trying to maximize content and videos. Also, since I have a different job now, my time is much more limited, so videos will be less frequent. However, I still plan to do them. Thank you so much to those who have joined my journey thus far, regardless of how long or how far back you join. Some of you are newer subscribers and on board, and there are still several that have watched since day one over seven years ago. Thank you guys for coming along this entire time with me. That means so much to me that there are people that have gone on this journey with me. 
By the way, I still have an RV video to post, which has yet to be edited, so there still may be some RV content to come. This is a new chapter, a very exciting one, and one where I feel like I finally have the peace of mind to settle in day by day, project by project, and enjoy life and share it with you. Thank you for watching. Find something to appreciate and keep it simple.